Sweet. All right. All right. We got to sync that up and we're ready to go. All right. So uh, today we're going to talk about um, some more decision making. Uh, I'll specifically want to focus on the assignments for today and make sure that you understood how to do those. Uh, but I also want to be able to uh, make sure that you're ready for this Friday's assignment. So um, the, I want to take questions about that and then I'll uh, talk about the decision making uh, assignment for, for today as well. So what questions did you have about the uh, project for Friday? Yes? Actually, the minimum question? I think it was, um, we got the constraints on the site. Uh -huh. um, and putting those into the model, we aren't sure, I think, of how. Do uh, we have to do that like, individually? Or is there, like, no, no, so it provides you a uh, CSV, a common separated value. That's separated by tab, so you need to make sure that if you're importing it, you say that you're importing a value with, with tabs. And, and so you should just be able to import it, and it will turn that into the proper sets of equations already. All right. Uh, um, should be under File Import, I believe. Uh, so <clears throat> when you import it then, uh, it should import it as equations. Um, and there are some less than or equal inequalities, and some equal. So you might want to sort them, because then it would be really easy in your model to you know, do all your less than or equal with one set of um, constraints and your equal with another set of constraints. So you can, you can do it pretty quickly if, if you do that. So uh, yeah, just <coughs> excuse me. remember that um, it's providing you an Excel file already. And so you should be able to import it as equations for your, your uh, own Excel file. Other question. So what that should mean is that most of your time is just verifying that the equations that you receive are the <coughs> equations that you want them to be. Um, a lot of times uh, the biggest problem that students have is not entering the same county names in, in the different boxes. And so, they, so when it's trying to align them up and say, hey, I'm looking for this district seat, but I can't find it anywhere, and things blow up. Or my list of neighbors doesn't match my list of um, um, county locations, and so it, it gets really uh, messed up. Uh, or I put extra blank lines in, uh, in the <coughs> data input. It will generate extra blank constraints for those blank lines. So it's, it's not a super robust program, so you, you can have to be willing to be a little bit finicky with the data input so it fits exactly uh, like I specified. Yeah. So say one of the values is like a, a name with um, two words like New Hartford or something. Do we have to put the word together in order for it to work? Uh, no, you do not. You just need to make sure that you're consistent with how you put it everywhere. It's case sensitive, space sensitive. Um, some people last year would have Saint spelled S T period in one place and S A I N T in another place because they were culling the data from different. Inputs. It's not that intelligent. <laughs> All right. So, if we have time, I'll come back to the question we ended the day with on Monday with the uh, video game because I want to uh, show some uh, diagrams. But uh, what I'd like to do is look at the problems for today. Uh, I'm specifically going to start with the vineyard problem. 
um, because there's a new thing I want to look at after we're done with that. So I'm going to take the data from that and expand it in, in a new way. Um, and then if we have time, I'll look at the, the airport problem. All right. So what is the decision that we are trying to make with this problem here, the, the vineyard problem? Yeah, Dave. What grapes we should plant. Okay, so that's the decision that we have. So how many options, What? how many different decisions can uh, we make in this problem? Yes, yeah. three decisions. With uh, three decision options, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which are? Uh, only Chardonnay, only Riesling, or both. Only Chardonnay, only Riesling, or both. Okay, and that's the only decision that we have to make for this problem, right? But there are um, multiple uh, <coughs> states of nature, to, to use our, our textbook's uh, wording, that we have to do. So which states of nature uh, do, let, let's go, yeah, what states of nature do we care about when we only plant Chardonnay grapes? Demand is strong, demand is weak. Which demand? Chardonnay. For Chardonnay. Right. We don't care about the demand for the Riesling because we're not planting that, right? So, uh, so weak Chardonnay or strong Chardonnay. I'm going to just do, abbreviate here so I don't have to type out a bunch. How about if we only plant Riesling? Not the same thing. Similar, right? It's symmetric, right? What do we care about here? Weak Riesling we, versus strong Riesling. And then, if there's both, four options. Now there's four possible states of nature, right? Because we can have all combinations of weak and strong with both Chardonnay and with, with Riesling. So we can say weak for both. We can say weak Riesling, strong uh, Chardonnay. We can say strong Riesling, weak Chardonnay. Or we can say strong for both. These are the, the four <coughs> states of nature that can occur when we make this decision right here. Right? Is that a question, Kim? It's, I don't know if this is a good question, but for boxes versus circles, what is, is the box the choice? I'm not being very consistent yet. I'm just trying to distinguish that this is a decision versus this is a, 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 a uncontrolled event, right? It's something that we uh, don't have control over. So uh, even in my notes, I actually have this as a square and this as a circle. So I, I'm not a big stickler on whether you use a, a circle or a square, as long as you make the distinction consistently about which is a decision point and which is a, 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 an event uh, from outside of your control. All right? So, uh, what is our expected profit in this case where we have a weak demand for Chardonnay and we have planted Chardonnay. 20,000, okay, I'm going to change colors here. How about if we have strong demand? 70,000. I'll come back to probabilities in a second, but I want to fill out our uh, outcomes first. How about if we have only planted Riesling? What's our expected profit if we have a weak demand for the Riesling? 25,000. And if it's strong? 45,000. All right. And then finally, what is our expected profit if we plant both and we have a weak demand for both? 22,000. How about if it's only strong for Chardonnay? 26,000. What about strong only for Riesling? And strong for both? 
okay? So now let's come back and look at the probabilities for each of these. Now, how do we get to the probability for this weak Chardonnay? Because your book didn't say there was a weak Chardonnay. You had to compute what this probability was, right? What, how did you compute what that probability was? Um, adding up both the weeks, both of the weak Chardonnays that match up with the weak and strong Riesling. And then both the strong Chardonnays that are <coughs> with the weak and strong. Correct. So we combined the, the demands of the Riesling uh, together because we don't care what the demand of the Riesling is. So if we do that, what is the percentage, the probability that we will have weak Chardonnay demand? 0.55. Yeah, 55%. And that then, if you did the same thing, since this is the only other option, they better add up to 100%, right? So that's a good check for yourself to make sure that you did it properly. How about here? What's the uh, probability that we will have weak demand for Riesling? Which again means that we better have 70% here. And then your book did give you the breakdown of the probabilities for each of these four here, right? So that would be 5% um, Fifty percent here. Is that right? I'm reading my notes correctly. We seriously from Chardonnay. Twenty-five percent, and then twenty percent. Okay, and with with that, then we can go ahead and compute the expected value of each of these decisions given the the probabilities of these states of nature. Right, so uh, how do we compute this first expected value right here? Yeah. It's a sum product of the blue and the green. Okay, so we do 20 times 55% plus 70 times 45%. And we get what as a result? 42,500. Okay, and we would do the same thing for each one of these, right? This would be 25, 25 times 30% plus 45 times 70%. And we would do the same thing, each blue one times each green one, add them together. And so our total here would be 39.6 and 39. All right. So when your book asked which one you would recommend, what did you say? Only Chardonnay. Recommend only planting Chardonnay. Why? Because that's the highest interest. Okay. And <coughs> that is a true statement, but on the test, that would not be sufficient because we are not just using one evaluation mechanism for making a choice. You should also look into the other decision-making strategies and, and look at them in sum or look at them as a group and not just look at the expected value. So we should also be looking at our maxi-max um, in this case, right? What is the optimistic uh, scenario, right? What would, the, what would that tell us, that strategy to do? That would also do Chardonnay, right? Because we would the best case scenario is we're going to make seventy thousand dollars if we plant Chardonnay and we have strong Chardonnay. We should also do our minimax, right? Our uh, worst case scenario. So if we made this decision, what's the worst case that could happen? Twenty. The worst case here. Twenty-five. The worst case here. 22, so if we did a min and max, we would actually say to only do uh, Riesling, right? Because we could make sure at the worst case scenario, we're going to make $25,000.
right? So if you if you you know invest your life savings and you can't afford to lose it, you know maybe this is the right scenario for you. So you have to incorporate not just what the best expected value is, but you have to understand uh, what the, the situation is. Finally, you would also be expected to do a minimax regret. Right? So um, the minimax regret here is a, is a little bit uh, different than you're used to because we don't have this in, in table form. So let's look at that real quickly. If we um, planted Chardonnay, right? That's the decision we're making. Now we look at uh, what the the state of behavior are. So we're going to um, do our decision: D1, D2, D3, and we'll fill in this. So even though our chart doesn't have all four categories, we're going to, to look at them there. So weak foe, weak Riesling, strong Chardonnay, strong Riesling, weak Chardonnay, and strong foe. Okay? So um, if we decide, so this is Chardonnay, this is only Riesling, and this is both. Okay. If we decide that there is Chardonnay, that we're going to plant that, and the state of nature that actually occurs is that we get weak both, we know that we're going to get 20,000, right? But we could have gotten 25 from here, or 22 from here. So what is our regret going to be in that case? 5,000. It's 5,000, right? Because if we would have only planted the Riesling, right, we, we could have made 5,000 more dollars. How about here? If there's weak Riesling and strong Chardonnay, this doesn't change right here, but this does, right, down here. So our regret in that scenario would actually bump up to, to 6. Thousand. Well, wouldn't it be zero because it's strong Chardonnay it goes up to seventy thousand? Oh, 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 yes. Sorry. So it'd be zero. Thank you. Very good catch. I don't have this table written in my mind. If we had strong Riesling, weak Chardonnay, we would be in this case mm -hmm. twenty, forty-five, and forty. Right. So we could have made. 45, so we regret 25 in this case, right? And strong both, we have no regret. So this duplication here is a result of only having two in, in this category. Uh, let's, let's keep going. If we do decision two, what if we have weak both? What kind of regret do we have? We're going to make 25. We could have made 20 in this case, or 22 in that case. Zero regret, right? We made the right choice here. Okay? How about if the wheat, the Riesling is weak, but the Chardonnay is strong? We could have made what? 45. We could have made 70 if we would have planted Chardonnay. So our regret in that case is going to be? 45. 45. Okay, what if the Riesling is, is strong and the Chardonnay is weak? Zero. That, again, is zero. That, this is just like this was a duplication. Now that's our, our duplication right there. And then finally, if they're both strong, we would have made 45. We could have made 70, so we regret 25. Finally, if we plant both, and they're both weak, we are going to make 22, but we could have made 
4.5. So our regret there is weak Riesling straw. We could have made, we were going to make 26, but we could have made 70, right? So our regret there, 44. 44. Strong root. Here we make 40. We could have made 45 or 20. So our regret in that case is 5. And then if they're both strong, we're going to make 60. But we could have made 70. So notice in this case, this is an interesting case. We're always going to regret whatever we did. <laughs> Maybe it's not such a strong choice, right? So now what do we do that we've cataloged all our regrets? We add them up. We don't add them up. Okay. The choice that we'll least regret, right? So how do we identify which choice we're going to least regret? We actually have to look what the worst regret we could encounter is first, right? So we could face a regret of $25,000 in this scenario right here. We could face a regret of up to $45,000 here and 44 here. I see. <clears throat> and what we want to do is face the least worst case scenario of regret, which is this one right here. So this is a second decision making strategy, or third now, right? The expected value, the best case scenario, and our minimax regret all point to planting only Chardonnay. That's an example of not just using one decision-making strategy, but using multiple decision-making strategies to say they're all kind of, or almost all honing in on, this is probably the right decision to make because so many different ways, so many different values point to it as being the, the best choice to make. Yes, Victor. Is there a strategy that just like, I don't know, I guess more efficient than the other, like, that you wait more? Like, yes, but you have to look at the values of the decision maker, because it's not always the same, okay? So I'm not going to say always use the expected value way heavier, or always weigh the minimax regret more heavy. You have to know for that particular decision maker, when you're providing this information to, to whoever's making the decision, what is important to them? I'm just saying, they, they all point at a different solution. Right. That's why you have to ask what's important to them. Uh, it, the conservative scenario where we look at our worst case scenario, that might be really important. I can't risk it. It's really important to me that I not lose my money or, you know, the cost of being wrong.